morning, Hugh. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Philly. Hey, just as a side note, hey, everybody, don't get your meat where you make your bread. Just remember that because it's gotten a lot of people in trouble. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just think about it for a minute. Just say it to yourself a couple times and just remember it. Don't get your meat where you make your bread. Sometimes a reminder is always necessary, right? Yeah, it is. And that's, I think, been the theme of the week here in Philadelphia, a reminder of, you know what, the Eagles had a lot of issues, unfortunately. They had a lot of issues at the end of last season. You know, we, we had this story from Craig Carton a couple days ago, the idea of, you know, things that happened in that locker room, but he couldn't <laughs> say. Well, he look. A lot of hot sauce on that thing. He did. A lot of hot sauce. And, and Craig's a TV guy. We know he's a former radio guy. He was here at one point. And, you know, he's doing a TV show now. But it even hits harder, Hugh, when it comes from someone who's here, who's respected, who's a reporter. Derek Gunn yesterday he threw this one out there. According to sources from Derek Gunn's Twitter page, Jalen, big contract, pulled in numerous directions on off the field, put him under a lot of pressure he didn't handle well. And then this is the part that really got people. Big Dom suspended, controls Sirianni sideline emotions. In his absence, Nick gets in numerous arguments with players, coaches during the game as we uh, we continue to unpack what the heck happened to this Eagles team. And, Hugh, the um, the issue of culture continues to be po- a big, big topic that this may have been the biggest issue here with this team this season. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's one of those things where we're trying to still figure out where this team fell apart. And it's not a good look when you talk about the head coach being a bit of a hothead. Now, I know he's not the first. He's definitely not the first. But if, if you're the high head to the point where, you know, the buffer that you need on a day-to-day basis, when he's not there, it just gets worse for you. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that says about you. That's just not a good look for a team that was obviously fragmented towards the end of the year. And I don't know, like, if that's the reason why we were given this report was to basically justify the way things happen. I, I don't believe that to be the case. But, I mean, if, you, if you're that much of a hot head, I, you, you got to ask the question, Joe. And I like Coach Sirianni, but if if you can't control yourself to that point, why are you still here? Uh, look, I've wondered that same thing. I mean, I didn't want him here to begin with, and but and look, this is it's embarrassing that that report yesterday for the Eagles for Sirianni, it's embarrassing that we have to the idea that we have to have a babysitter on the sideline, that we have to have a security guard on the sideline for the head coach of the football team. I find that embarrassing. We're gonna get to some Sirianni audio here in a minute, where he basically talked about his emotion on the sideline. But, Hugh, I, I've been thinking a lot about this, and I'm not denying that there's some culture issues here, right? You you know, you've brought up stuff you've heard. Howard this morning, we'll get to that, said he heard something similar about a couple players in this team. I'm not denying they have a culture issue. But I don't think that's the biggest issue they have. I think, and I'm not saying you, I just mean in general, we're looking for reasons why this thing fell apart, right? We all mm-hmm. are. Why they? Why did it go so bad? I think their biggest issue is talent. I, I think... It was the same. Look, I don't love Sirianni. I think everyone knows that. But he's the same guy that they won a lot of games with. The sideline antics and his yelling and his nonsense behavior, they won with when the team was better the year before. He, you know, he's bobbing his head up and down to the camera two years ago in a playoff game, hit the best roster in football, and he won. Jalen Hurts has been stoic and kind of, you know, this is his personality since the minute he got here. But they won when he played better. I think the Eagles' biggest issue is talent. I think some of this stuff is is everyone's looking for an excuse on why they fell apart. Look, their defense was maybe the worst in the NFL. Jalen didn't play as well. And I look at their roster. I've pointed this out many times since our offseason began. I count seven players I could count on here next year being above average. Seven Seven really good players. That's the whole thing. And one of them is looking for a trade right now. It might be down to six. In a couple weeks, I just think the team's not very good right now, and we're like, oh well, Sirianni's you know a clown on the sidelines. That's why they lose. Well, that doesn't help. But I think their biggest issue is talent. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. You, the talent isn't great enough right now, and then you throw this culture stuff on top, and we have ourselves a situation. No, I understand where you're coming from because you're you're basically looking at the defensive side of the ball. It's terrible when you talk about that. But when I when I look at this offensive side of the ball, I I, I tell myself and I believe that we have enough talent on that side of the ball, that if the culture was right, we could overcome a lot of the deficiencies that we had defensively because we saw it at the beginning of the season. And as the culture started to break down, that's when you start hearing about different people being in different silos and all these different stories coming out. And the fact that Carton went on television and and put hot sauce on a story that has not been validated. But the bottom line is this. Something went wrong with this football team Mm -hmm. last year, and we still don't have our finger on the pulse. And it's not a good look, Joe, when you have the leader and the culture setter 
being thrown out there, thrown under the bus, in my opinion. For what reason at this time of the year, I don't know. But basically saying that he can't maintain his composure and he's arguing with the players and coaches on the sideline, that's not a good look for I a guy agree. who sat there in a few a few weeks ago and said that he is the culture setter. Well, he's reorganizing the core values. Yeah, you, I mean, it's like I mean, it's it's kind of laughable. And I, and like I said, I like Coach Sirianni, but the the timing of all of this is not good. It's just not good because we're in a we're in a position right now. They just had the HBCU combine a few weeks ago. Now they're having the combine mm-hmm. next week. We're trying to put the past behind us and get ready for a new season. The timing of all this to me is not good, and it just tells me that whatever the issue is with this team, it's still unresolved. It's still unresolved, Joe, and that's, that makes me nervous because we still have a lot of time before the season starts, but if we're still bringing out if, – if little leaks of, of this story and that story are still coming out – after the after the combine and after the drafts and stuff, that that's not a good spot to be in, especially I, when you talk about starting yes. a new season. I agree. I mean, I agree with you on that. I, none of this stuff is good. I just think their bigger issue is their talent. Nick Sirianni is the same guy that was yelling at the crowd in Kansas City when they won against the Chiefs, as he was when they fell apart down the stretch. The problem is their defense was as bad as any team in the NFL. Jalen Hurts stopped playing at a high level. That that's their biggest issue. And I don't know. I'm not even a Sirianni guy. And I, I could, that's what I feel. It's their biggest issue. 215 592 949 for your reaction to all this talent or culture. What's the Eagles' biggest issue right now? And of course, the D Gun report yesterday, specifically the point on Big Dom when he was suspended. He controls Sirianni's <laughs> emotions on the sideline. I don't it, give a sh. In his absence, Nick gets in numerous arguments with players and coaches during games. Let's hear from Sirianni. On some of that, you know, he talked after the Giants game in December, that first Giants game, about his body language on the sidelines. Here he was. I need to be better in those scenarios. You know, when it's when there's some high pressure areas, they got to see me calm. I, you know, and and not and not tense there. There's a time and place to be, you know, intense, and there's a time and place not to be. And I'm always and I'm and I know that's something that I always have to work on as a, as a head coach. I agree he has to work on it. I don't think he's good enough at it. I think it's a problem for Nick Sirianni, but did they not tackle anybody in Tampa because he's too tense? Or did they not tackle anybody in Tampa because they, the defense was terrible? That, that's the way I view this thing. 215-592-9049 for one more from Sirianni, and then we'll get everyone's reaction here. Sirianni on how tense he is in this, on the sideline. Specifically, he's talking about that Giants game in December on Christmas when mm-hmm. him and Reddick were going back and forth, and you saw the clip of, of Devontae Smith looking at him sideways. Here was Sirianni and all that. There was moments in that game yesterday where I felt like I was too tense, and I and I and that you know on, on the sideline, and I and I need to be better about that. I, I have to do a better job, and if I'm going to ask the players to do a better job themselves, then I have to do a better job myself. And, and I definitely felt that yesterday out, out of myself. Look, I rarely say this because whenever Sirianni comes up, I'm I'm usually frustrated. I think this is actually too far on the Sirianni thing. I I think we're taking this too far. I think it's been overblown. He is a hothead. I don't love that he is. But the team won a lot of games with him as a hothead because they had better players. As the talent decreased and Jalen stopped playing well, well, now it's, you know, we need a babysitter on the sideline. 215-592-9494. It's how you hop in. Talent, or is it the culture? What? is the biggest Eagles issue right now.